One of the most common mistakes I see most runners make is that they neglect strength training. They have the mindset like I once did that lighter is faster. But in reality, strength training doesn't mean that you put on a bunch of unnecessary weight. It can help you become faster by having more power. It can prevent cramping and bonking during a race by having more muscle endurance. And it can reduce your risk of injury by building up connective tissue and increasing your bone density. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I balance strength training with running. But first up, we've got a 20 mile run this morning, so let's go do it. Welcome to episode three of Training to Run 100 Kilometers. This is our peak week of training. We're gonna hit about 70 to 75 miles this week. This morning, I've got 20 easy miles, and tomorrow morning, I've got another 20 easy miles. And I wanna show you guys this new heart rate monitor from Koros. This is actually an arm heart rate monitor. It slips on like so. Very different from the normal chest heart rate monitors, but they sent this out to me earlier this week. I've been wearing it all week and I really, really enjoy it so far. I think one of the biggest questions I've gotten is why arm versus chest heart rate monitor. And really the way these optical heart rate monitors work is it doesn't matter where at on your body it is, as long as there's like a good flat connection on the surface of your skin. And so far the arm monitor is much more comfortable, less constrictive than the chest. It still seems super accurate, very responsive. It pairs super easily with the watch. You literally just slip it on and it has like a sensor that can tell when you're wearing it and then it automatically connects to your watch. Again, overall, I really enjoyed it. If you're in the market for a new heart rate monitor, I recommend it. And then also real quick, I'll show you my intra run fuel for today. So I'm gonna eat these scratch energy chews right now before I hit the run. And then around mile five or six, I'm gonna eat this spring energy gel right here. And then I'm gonna take a Morton gel probably around mile 13 or 14 to get me through the rest of the run. Let's go do 20 miles. So a lot of people have asked me why my longest run of this 100K prep is only 20 miles. And really there's just not a lot of benefit to running more than three or four hours for a training run. Sure, you can go run 30, 40, 50 miles during training, but the amount of recovery that that's gonna require, how many days it's gonna take to get you back to 100%, just outweighs the actual physical gains that you're gonna make from that. Sure, you can make some mental gains, build some confidence knowing you can run those distances, but again, you're just not getting much more out of it physically after that three or four hour mark. And I have to give a lot of credit to my friend Zach Bitter. He's been helping me a lot through this prep. So for today, I have 20 miles. It's gonna take me around three hours. I'm gonna come back tomorrow, do another 20 miles, another three hours or so. Love hey, thank you. Always love to see that. miles in halfway there one loop down we've been going for about an hour and 20 minutes about 755 average pace i'm grabbing another gel getting a swig of water i've literally done hundreds of miles around this 10 mile loop and it never ever gets old austin is literally just the best running city in america it's so so great i love running down here all right let's go finish up these last 10 miles Quick bathroom break. Had to pee real bad. These easy miles are so boring. It's literally just one mile after another. Keep them coming, get the miles in, there's just not a lot of stimulus when you're just running easy miles. So it's a lot of time to think and be in your own head, which I love that. <laughs> 20 miles in the books. Ah, 20 miles 
two hours, 40 minutes, 801 minute per mile pace. Started to get a little hot. Average heart rate 151. Basically right where we wanted to be under that 154 threshold. So a very solid long run today. Another 20 miles tomorrow morning. But this evening, I've got a lower body strength workout. So we're just hammering the legs. But let's head home, grab some food. We'll see you there. Many hours later. It is time for our afternoon smoothie. I drink this same smoothie pretty much every single day, about an hour or so before I do my strength workout. So first, got a bag of frozen berries. This is blackberries, blueberries, strawberries. I do one banana. I'll do about half of this coconut water. Then I'll do some raw milk. Do a scoop of this Ello Smart Protein Powder. Big spoonful of peanut butter. A couple tablespoons of honey. About three or four dates. And that's it. Pretty simple. I just throw all that in this thing. Lots of protein, lots of carbs. Tastes great. The perfect pre-workout snack. So good. Every day, this smoothie, I'm gonna drink this, then we'll go lift here shortly. All right, it is time for our strength workout. As you can see behind me, we've got the plunge rolling. I like to start every one of my strength workouts with a cold plunge. It's honestly one of the best things that I own. It's amazing for both recovery and mental strength training. But one thing, if you are gonna cold plunge, if you're gonna use cold exposure, and your goal is to build muscle strength or size, you want to make sure that you cold plunge before your workouts. If you cold plunge after a workout, it can kill a lot of those gains that you might've made during the workout, so make sure to cold plunge before. And also, I've just noticed my strength workouts are way better. I get a better pump, I feel better, I perform better, and so I highly, highly recommend it. Yeah, baby, the plunge. I love it so much. Before I start this workout, I kind of want to explain to you guys my thought process and methods for how I balance strength training with running. What's worked best for me is pairing my leg workouts on the same day as either my speed workout in the middle of the week or on the same day as my long runs. So if I can do a speed workout or a long run, fatigue my legs, and then that same day, teach my body to adapt and still perform well in a lower body strength workout, that's just gonna make my legs even stronger, build even more muscular endurance by stacking those two on the same day. So this morning we had 20 miles, now we're doing a lower body workout, and then tomorrow morning we're doing another 20 miles. So my legs are definitely taking a beating, but through that pressure and that discomfort, we can create stronger muscles, get those adaptations, that way by the time we taper and we show up to the race, we can perform even better. I think the more data we have, the better. So I like to track all my workouts, whether it's a run or a strength workout. So I'll show you kind of how I use the strength feature for my workouts. Okay, so we're here on the main Koros watch face. I'm gonna push the main selector button. I'm gonna scroll down to strength. I'm gonna click settings. This shows showing you the rest alerts if you wanna use these. I usually just put it all the way up to 60 seconds. I like to rest at least a minute in between each and we'll hit start and then we select the body part. We are doing legs slash hips today. Click that and it starts the workout. For example, after I finish a working set, I'll hit the lap button and it'll automatically start that 60 second rest period. Hit lap again, just to skip through that rest period. And then it goes to your next strength set. Another thing I always like to do before I start a workout is some band work. So I'll use this mini band to go through a few exercises. It takes like three to five minutes. It's super quick and easy, but it gets the hamstrings, glutes, hips, everything nice and loosened up. So first I'll start with the band. Uh, around my ankles and I'll do some lateral walks here. I'll do about five to each side. Then I'll put the band around my feet and I'll do some high knees. This is great for hip flexors. You can really feel the hip flexor just firing in there with these. I love these. I'll put the band back around my ankle, hold on to something sturdy and then I'll do some kickbacks. These are great for glute and hamstring activation. You should feel it all down through the back side of your legs. And then last but not least, I'll elevate my heels on something. I usually just use this thing because it's always here. And I'll do some really slow, intentional 
deep squats. I'll sit at the bottom for about 10 to 15 seconds. I'll pop up, explode, make sure I press my hips forward, squeeze my glutes at the top. And the reason for the heel elevated is it just lets you get a little bit deeper. That is the band warm up. It takes just a few minutes, super quick and easy, and it helps tremendously going into the workout. All right, we're doing some deadlifts today. First, we've got halting reps, which is where we go about a half rep up to our knees, back down all the way, and then a full rep all the way up. This is actually my first time ever doing these, uh, but my coach prescribed them, so we're gonna try them out for today. Here we go, set of three. That wasn't too bad. I will say, running 20 miles and then doing heavy deadlifts is challenging. It ain't easy. Also, earlier this week, I pulled a new deadlift one rep max. I was pretty stoked about that. I've been working with Pete Rubish, an elite and legendary power lifter. He's been helping me a lot. My ultimate goal is to eventually pull 500 pounds um, and we're slowly but surely getting there. He thinks I can do it by the end of the year, so we'll see. Now I've got one set of eight belted deadlifts at 365. Bree's gonna watch this. I better I better make it look good for her. I have three, I have a set of eight, 365. One of my favorite cues I like to tell myself when I'm deadlifting is keeping my arms nice and long. Think of my arms being as long as possible. It really, really helps getting it off the ground initially. Two more. Oh, that was a strain. <sighs> Last one. <sighs> oh. <sighs> My legs are tired. It's crazy how much harder those feel when you have really fatigued legs when you ran 20 miles <laughs> earlier in the day. But I will say deadlifts for me have been one of the biggest helps when it comes to running. It helps so much for glute and hamstring strength. And I think that the majority of running injuries for most people stem from weak glutes. So if you can really build up those glutes, I think it helps so much to prevent injuries. And also just getting used to having your body under that load, holding hundreds of pounds on your legs helps so much for bone density and building up all that connective tissue. So for my first main exercise of my lower body workouts, I always like to start with a compound movement. And then for the rest of the workout, for all the accessory movements, I like to keep it as functional as possible. So for today, I've got some walking dumbbell lunges. I think lunges are one of the best functional movements you can do for your legs, especially for runners. All right, and we are already on the last exercise for today. I'm just doing three different exercises, deadlifts, walking lunges, and box step ups. You really don't have to overcomplicate strength training. This whole session is taking me about 30 to 45 minutes. It's pretty quick and easy, but it gets the job done. It works everything in the legs. We get a little bit of functionality. We get some compound movements. We get some heavy lifts in there. You don't need to spend 90 minutes in the gym every day. Just make it simple. So I'm gonna do some box step ups. I'm gonna clean them up to the front rack position. I'm gonna step up all the way up. I'm gonna do the knee drive all the way back down. Up, knee drive all the way back down. Super functional. If you've ever been hiking or run an ultra or been on a trail, you will know how well that these simulate hiking up a mountain requires power, requires muscle endurance, requires balance, stability, functionality. Such a great exercise. And that is the strength workout for today. Strength training doesn't have to be complicated. You can pick 
a handful of exercises, do them on a consistent basis, and you will notice the difference, I promise. For me, I notice more muscular endurance, I'm less sore from running, my form doesn't break down as much at the end of long runs, I have more power, more top end speed. Strength training, I think, is one of the secret ingredients to being a better runner and just healthier as a whole. So hopefully you guys learned something from this little workout today. My legs are totally beat up, and we still gotta run another 20 miles tomorrow morning. I've got Drew coming out to film in the morning. It's gonna be a good time, so we'll see you guys in the morning. All right, Saturday morning, it is day two of our weekend long runs. 20 miles yesterday, strength workout last night, and another 20 miles this morning. The legs are definitely, definitely feeling it, but I like to think of this as voluntary adversity. Do I really wanna be out here? Not really, my legs hurt, I'm tired, I didn't sleep that well last night. But if you show up and do hard things willingly, then when real shit comes up in life, real adversity, you're better equipped to handle it. So we got 20 miles this morning. Drew's out here following us on the bike, getting some content for us. Uh, I don't know if he really wants to be out here either, <laughs> but we're, we're gonna do 20 miles together this morning. So beautiful morning. It's like 60 degrees overcast, a little, a little sprinkle in the air. So it's gonna be a good morning. like this it's crucial to not think of the run as a whole and instead just chunk it down into one mile at a time instead of looking down at your watch and you're at 2.1 thinking oh my gosh we have another 18 miles to go no it's like we have 0.9 to go just get to that next mile and then you do that over and over and over again you get those small little wins along the way and before you know it you're done with the whole thing. I saw that right at the bottom, but I'm raining right up with top of them. Now we on top. Ooh, is you ready or you not? Ooh, we sitting high. We on the rise. You know it's time. My rain never stops. This is my time, my day, my hour. This is my time. over seven miles in. I'm gonna take a gel. This is a Morton 160. Love it. miles in uh, about an hour and 20 minutes We're sitting around an eight minute pace right now so right on pace heart rate feels good legs feel pretty good 10 to go but first we gotta get some milk rookie mistake Dad. this is what we do it for right here i promise this isn't just for the camera i was craving this yesterday during my other 20 miles and I was like, why did I not bring milk? So I made sure to bring it this morning. This is raw milk from Kettler Farms, Kettler Family Dairy. Oh, thank you, Kettler Family. Mm, dude, that first sip with the cream on top. It's so good. Mm. It's got carbs, it's got electrolytes, it's got protein. Bacteria. A little bacteria. Never hurt anybody. 
you're gonna want some of this. All right, refilling our handheld bottle. Doing another scoop of electrolytes. Another thousand milligrams of sodium. It's humid out here, so we're sweating a lot. So we gotta rehydrate, stay on top of the sodium. 10 more miles. We're gonna reverse the loop this time. So we'll go back the other way for a, a little bit of variety. But uh, it's feeling good. Giving everyone a business with a new kiss in town. A breaking walls, blowing bridges, a leaving rubble like a wrecking ball. I'm going ahead, call us outlaws. Mm -hmm. Cause we tell the roof off. Yeah. All right, we're about 17 miles in, three miles to go. The legs are definitely starting to feel it now. It's feel heavy, fatigued, so just really focusing on my form, making sure my form doesn't break down, and just being intentional with everything. So, three miles ago, almost there. Drew's the real trooper here. Yeah, honestly. Flying the drone, shooting photos. is a wrap on the 20 miles a nice fast finish last mile was like 650 so I feel good about that we had 20 miles two hours 39 minutes seven minutes 58 seconds per mile on average so average heart rate was 152 so still under that aerobic threshold right where we want to be but that wraps up episode three of the training for 100k mini series that's the peak week. We've got two weeks to taper and then we race on December 2nd. So feeling really good today and yesterday gave me a lot of confidence going into the race. So now it's all about dialing in our strategy, getting the taper, and then uh, we'll go crush 100K here in about 14 days. But thank you guys for watching. Thank you to Drewby for being out here filming my slow ass today. We'll see you guys in the next video.